Because just today, um, after yesterday's um, long play game against a 1300 rated type player, um, I thought, well, it's a good idea to really look at um, the sort of standard and level of play of like the 1300s. I mean, this, this one player is not representative of all 1300 players, but just to have a look at the, the types of things um, that you can expect within like the 1300 area working through to the 1400 area. So the part way through this game, we've got them on watch, so hopefully it will flick through and um, show us each of the games that they're playing. So it looks like they've got the opponent on the ropes in this situation there versus a 1400 here. I'm not looking to name or name anybody, so I'm hoping it doesn't flick the name miraculously somewhere so that you can see it. So this is just looking at the playing style so that we get a good understanding for our own development as we're working through each of our own answer processes and the developments, etc. So at the minute, it looks like he's got a nice little pin. If I just get this up here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so he's got a nice little pin coming through, pinning the rook to the bishop at the minute. And you probably can expect this sort of movement from here so that the bishop is protecting the rook. But he's landed on this um, bishop here. And they've not actually seen it. That's interesting. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that you kind of expect within this area. In 1300, 1400 uh, missed opportunity type situations. And quite a lot of the times you will see that type of stuff. So um, any magical moves, realistically, you don't really see. It's like I mentioned in the um, game yesterday, it's more a case of trying to just make sure that that's coming up on here. Yeah. Yeah, it's more a case of at this level looking to get pieces off the board not necessarily finding the ideal positions per se but there's a good understanding of how the pieces actually move and may, maybe not a lot of teamwork going on the, the single attacks are there but not really the major com combinations to build up an attack towards the king but they definitely do have a good idea of how to um, put pressure onto the king but maintaining that pressure might be a little bit difficult going forward. It's not to say all of them, um, but it's a generalization of this type of level, the 1300 through to the 1400. Any magical moves that you see on there, then obviously you will question, um, just keeping it nice and simple for themselves. So now this opponent's attacking this pawn here, and he's actually got two bishops and he's got a rook. And that missed opportunity there was fairly quite crucial, but because he's got more pieces on the board, you'd expect him to really um, finish this game as um, black here. So unfortunately, the 1300 at this moment in time looks like they're fighting a losing battle just with having the rook. These two bishops are really just going to swarm the area. Like I said, they did have the opportunity to take the rook off the board there, but that was missed. So I haven't caught this one from the start, so I'm hoping to follow um, the 1300 through the rest of these games. Okay, they're still fighting on, and realistically it's looking for getting this, but maybe the king can just drop here. Or move the bishop and just defend. So in essence, potentially could have just resigned. Unless, of course, <laughs> Black makes a massive, massive mistake. And it's now time for finishing the game, it looks like. Bishop's got this square. Bishop could come for an x-ray, but this bishop is actually hanging at the moment. 
this is going to come in is this getting sewn up a little bit now so that's going to go there that's going to go there rook's going to come down then that's going to be a checkmate it's trying to make space but the rook is holding this line oh that's kind of a missed opportunity really isn't it because bishop could have come here with a check then done like a step ladder type thing then brought the rook down here potentially not saying i was right or anything like that um but the bystanders usually they see everything everybody see you know when you're sitting on the sidelines it's all good saying they could have done x y and z when you're actually in the game it's more difficult but we're looking at general themes here um why it's still continuing but really um black is like torturing them a little bit really they're just taking the time they're just going to peel pieces off so maybe they're not too sure on how to close out the um the game so that is another question that needs to be asked as well around about this kind of level is can they actually end the game it's got all these pieces on the board now he's starting to formulate it looks like king can't move because the rook is holding it to ransom along this line here Anyhow, he lets these pawns get up there. That'll be funny. But the thing is, the bishops are controlling these areas here. So it must be time now for him to start finishing off. But he's allowed the king to get here. So the rook can't drop. So it might be a little bit late to the party. His rook is in the centre of the board. And he's running out of time as well. He's on 26 seconds. So this is really quite quite simple and straightforward for them to pull out but maybe they just don't know how to end the game but with 25 seconds I'm not too sure that um, 1300 is actually going to succeed in gaining an advantage so it's a slow torturous event now he's feeling confident with the bishops king can't come there now so then maybe here or maybe the rook down so the king <laughs> okay so i'm not sure I, I think the rook could have just dropped down couldn't it so this is highlighting that type of process this end game process is um yeah it's a it's an important integral part so i'm looking forward to seeing the next game for the 1300 it looks like they're going to run out of time now okay yep so they've run out of time like the next game's not started yet okay and they're on right so let's check out how they open and maneuver in this area so is he looking to develop get the knight out make space it's gone for the opposite night so it's a little bit slower but i think this night needs to be coming out just to doesn't need to they do what they want to do i'm just trying to get into the game okay so that night comes out that's quite okay maybe this bishop coming here but now we can't go there so maybe they're going to come here but then that just drops so it's going to be oh they have done as well yeah, so obviously need to focus on opening up to castle if they've got anything about themselves so he actually brings the knight down 1300s like to whip stuff off the ball but then they have a sense of um, what's the word now trying to do advanced stuff yeah so they he's moved the pawn here just to give space for his king for castling maybe coming to attack the bishop that's based on my own style that's particularly what i would do if i'm looking to attack a piece 
but I want to get my king to safety. So keeping it nice and simple and straightforward. So one of these moves is going to happen. I don't think, maybe he's not going to take the knight. I think he's conscious that he needs to get his king to safety. But along the way, can he not attack something? 1300s like to attack things, but then they will potentially will fall into the realms of, okay, let's go a little bit arty and fancy because I'm, I'm trying to advance my skills. So... I want to explode out. So yes, he attacks the bishop. It makes sense. It's a straightforward move. It's not too arty or fancy. But we're trying to understand the psychology of not really don't take. Oh, he has taken. So the reason why I say don't take is because when they take here, now they've got this pawn. So he's going to probably have to go on queenside castle because you're given this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's going to work for white, it's just that it is quite a strong kind of manoeuvre and it's made it a little bit easy for them. So I want to see how he gets out of this situation. He's playing somebody lower than himself in terms of rating, but again, you never know, this player could be like a master in disguise or something. Um See how that's looking, make sure that that's safe. Yep, okay, good stuff. Yeah, so now he's like, he's got three pieces on this pawn. He's only got the knight and the king. So you can imagine, he's probably going to have to do this pawn move to block that off. Which, see, or oh, even that pawn move. And he's got a nice, look at that, beautiful fork. Oh, <laughs> excellent. So they have their moments of genius, per se. Um, but I would say from this moment on, yes, yeah, so he's going to have the advantage because the opponent's given him the advantage. So he's got to work his pieces together now. As a 1300, working the pieces together usually does let them down, especially working towards the end game. So I want to see how this player works his pieces together. He's still got three pieces, again, attacking this area. So, potentially, you're looking at this being hit. If he gets castled, then he's potentially getting his rook working down on this file. He doesn't want that to happen. I feel like I'm actually playing, but I'm not. So, it's um, really quite interesting just to see how their thought process are going. But we're looking at the pressure point, massive pressure point. So, he does push the pawn up. I can see castling coming here to get this rook, like we said, powering down on this file. Looks like he's trying to make inroads for his queen to come here as well. Because if you see all these pawns that are in the way, just wants to get these out of the way to get his queen involved. And when he gets castled, then he's going to have 50 million pieces on this pawn. So if that's the focal point, that's the weak area. And Mr. 1300 gave him that position. But it's not saying that White's winning. It's just that it looks more favourable for White at this moment in time. Unless, of course, he can turn the tables. He can't push there because the rook will take. So he's now making space for his king. He's also trying to own this file. As we said, I believe this is what he's going to be attempting to do. To come down here with the rooks. Making space for his queen. He's not going to be bothered about these pawns. Just making space here. Trying to squeeze everything in. Get an Alakine's gun, whatever it is, down onto this pawn. Because Black's pieces are currently away from his king. So his king is home alone. Oh dear. Um, so this pawn move here, I'm not too sure. And this person's move dead quick onto this pawn. So he's looking to chop away at this pawn. To give space for his queen. Oh, he's taken as well. Oh my days. And um, so there's there's thunder and lightning hitting here. He's only got the knight and the king, and he's got the rook, the knight, and so it looks like it's kind of all over. Unless, of course, black has a he can't actually go there because it's not a check on the king. Well, he can physically take it. But it does not look that clever. I mean, if he's gonna just move his king and just Resign the fact that he's getting this pawn taken. Get the king here. That's not going to work. So it's all this time spent with these pawns over here. Not 
acknowledging the major attack that's actually kicking in here. Okay. Right, so... I think that's definitely demonstrating, but we'll, we're going to keep watching a few more games of um, Mr. 1300 just to get a good understanding. Uh, he can move here, but then he can drop down. It might be a bit harder for him to get a checkmate, per se, because the king can dance and get around the back here like that. So it's not over, it's just that he's sustained a little bit of damage. He's actually plus one out of all of that. Out of all those exchanges, he's plus one. So there might be method in his madness. It just look oh yay, yay. He's blocked his king in. He's bringing the knight here. So what we'd said has come true. They've attacked down on this side here with everything. A reverse Alakine's gun. <laughs> Now the queen's out. Oh, there might be method in his madness. Now the queen's coming, putting a check on his king. Interesting times. It's picking up. So he was vastly aware of what potentially could happen down here. That's really quite clever, isn't it? Now the opponent's pieces are all on the other side of the board. Now his king is home alone. Well, that's too late to the party because he's getting a check on his king. Ouch. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. I definitely didn't like the build-up to it. Maybe White could have done a little bit more in terms of building up towards this because at the end of the day, he's ended up being able to escape. Why did he come down here? Hold on a minute. What happened there? He didn't go for the check on the king. Huh? Oh, ooh, I don't know what happened there. It's still plus one because he's got like um, a knight, a minor piece up. I don't, I don't, I'm lost. Would that not have sealed the game for him, putting more pressure on his king, etc.? Okay. Now. He's getting, not checkmated, but his king's getting a bit roughed up. I don't think it's a checkmate position, though. Comes there, the king's still escaping, but then he's getting pawns off the board. But it's not a checkmate type situation. So I think White's going to waste a lot of energy. He's taking pawns off, that's fine. So now he's plus one, he's White, but there's no checkmate. So what is he, is he going to go for a draw? What's happened there? Something flashed. Uh, am I running out of memory or something? Um, anyway. Right, so, yeah. Looks like he's going for a draw. Being a lower-rated player, um, probably acceptable just to go for the draw against a higher-rated player. I mean, that's what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Missed opportunities yet again, I suppose, in this one. But it's showing the level and knowledge and concepts and ideas that a thirteen hundred up to fourteen hundred, they what they use and what they need to work on to develop as they were going through, just based on my own knowledge and experience. So that was quite interesting. It's still not over yet. He's not gone for the draw. He's trying to go for the win. That might have been the error you know the move that you make that you say oh i should have just get gone for the draw i think the opponent has fallen into that they should have just gone for the draw they, they can't win from this unless of course they can and um black is messing it up i've been shocked before in this game i'm i'm willing to be shocked again let me see so he's got two pieces on the night and now he's pushing a pawn. Oh dear. But he's going to lose a rook either way. So he's still going to be... No, it'll just be a rook for a rook, won't it? Yeah, so he loses the knight. And he didn't need to lose the knight. <sighs> he's taken the pawn. Wow. So they take pieces that really don't matter. Um, Black's just captured again. So he's still going to lose the knight anyway. 
Eh? What? Oh my days. Um. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> why it's got all these pawns? He could have just taken that rook off the board, exchanged off, he would have had a rook, and then he's got more pawns to play with. So this is where the ideas of, oh, I'm actually going to start playing high level chess type thing and then the game goes to pot. So now it's not clear as to really, it looks like he's given the game to black, as we just said now. It looks like he's given the game to black because he could have just gone for a draw. I don't see an actual advantage here now for white and I'm always willing to be shocked. But now this knight is just wreaking havoc all over the place. All the pawn advantage that he had is just going to totally be wiped out now. And he's got a minor piece up, which is free running around all over the place. He does have two rooks, but they're not linked up. So maybe that's what he's um, banking on. But the thing is, he's not going to take this pawn, is he? Because this king just takes the rook. So he's moved the rook now out of the way. But now the rook can put a check on his king. Maybe try and free up the king. He's got The problem he's got is he hasn't got these rooks linked up. And his king's... Oh, hey, nice one. So he's gone there. The knight's defending. He might potentially look to try and get this rook off the board. All the while, this rook is going to drop. So, yeah, that's what I'm just going to come to that one. You have to bring that one down. So it's a bit painful when you can't link your rooks up. But... If you've got opportunity to take some pieces off the board because he's um he's plus one in at the minute. Oh nice one, nice one. Yeah, okay, so potential probably just keeping it close, maybe. Yeah, going that way wouldn't be too clever. Yep, yeah. alright, so now we've got here eventually. Because we've got hey, nice one. So do we go for a little bit of a check here just to say, look, hey, I'm in the game or not? Problem he's got is, oh nice, okay, I like that, that's a nice little touch, I can work with that, just bring this here, protect, protecting the rook, not that way, see why didn't he just take the rook, <laughs> this is why it makes me laugh when I'm playing, if I'm playing like a 1300 or whatever it is, um, uh, I'm no great shakes, you know, at the end of the day, but um when they're coming out with high level moves, realistically, this is the type of standard that you normally would expect. Lots of missed opportunities, as we're seeing in this particular game here. And it really is, it's quite astounding to see. Um, they know what to do, they've got an idea of what to do. Now he's closing them down again for a draw. So now he's probably going to say, well, okay, yeah, it's, it's a draw now. Just keep them checks going. Black's saying, no, it's not a draw. He's actually he's re he's actually wanting to get his rook here. So once he comes behind his pawn, his rook, sorry. Ooh, what was that? Okay, it is down, but it's no cigar. Now he's unlinked his rooks as white. So I don't see it going much further now after this. This knight's chomping at the bit to get here. He's hoping that the king goes here. Ooh, so close. And look at that. And the rook has gone. So that was a very long-winded way of manoeuvring. So this is why when I'm if I'm playing a a range, a rating range area, this is why I can say quite confidently for myself, um, if there's something not quite right in the particular game, um, it's because of my experience of working with this sort of range area. Um, when you see masterful moves, um, which might not look masterful to other people, but it's just the way that they end up on the board, um, you can't, you're allowed to ask the question. You're allowed to say, well, I don't think that is quite right. Not based on my experience. Um, It's not all the time, but realistically, um, a high percentage of 
if you're getting a high percentage of 1300 players that are absolutely doing clean perfect strategical moves on you you're gonna you know you're definitely gonna be asking questions this is the sort of stuff that you expect to see from like a 1300 and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody works in their own way and they're playing their own way but there are certain types of conceptual maneuvers and ideas that these rating ranges work within so if this if this guy gets this pawn here whoo, and he's got the rook behind it now so he can push it there's nothing stopping and he's got it but he's got the queen <laughs> wow amazing Amazing, excellent. So we'll watch one more of the 1300 just to make sure, you know, to get some sort of consistency going. Because um, now the 1200 now has got a queen against them. And now he's a queen against the rook. So realistically, um, and he's running out of time as well. Oh, wow. What's he looking for? He's only got one second left. And that's that one. So that's the 1300. So we'll wait to watch one more game of the 1300. So we've got like a consistent sort of um, methodology of concepts around that type of area and the type of experience and skills that they would normally show um, when they're playing chess and like I say I love the art of chess and they love the art of chess too though else they won't be playing um, but there are certain standards certain expectations that you would you know see from this type of level so we'll wait to see that yeah the back on okay they're playing as black now okay so this will be the last one that we watch And you see, I think as well, it's just my personal opinion. I mean, this movement here with the pawn um, for like 1300, 1400s, probably, it's probably safer just blocking the pawn here. This type of maneuver is a little, to me, it's a little bit too advanced. I know, I know people do it right from when they start and stuff, but I think it's still a bit too advanced because there's so many variables to that actual position that black really doesn't really get set at oh. Wow, okay. So I don't know if the bishop's going to take on. This is a 1400, so the 1400 will be obviously thinking a little bit like, well, mistake to take and all that sort of stuff. Let's develop, let's, let's try and keep some tension a little bit. And when we do take, we want to be explosive. Um, but we we want to try and be masterful, so let's try and do a mistake to take. But then they end up just whipping stuff off the board. That's my general sort of um, feel. When there's nothing wrong with whipping stuff off the board, but kind of whipping it off without any teamwork and the position's not a valued position, so they just um, lose out. But they have the knowledge, you can see, because when they try and backtrack, then they're trying to get their pieces working together, etc. So we'll see what happens in this game. So now he's out attacking, he's making space for his castling. And the 1300's doing loads of dancing moves with the knight. So he's made his way all the way across with the knight, not developed any of his other pieces. Um, again, it's not like teamwork, it's like single attacks going on. So it's falling into the realms quite nicely of a 1300. 1400 is weighing up the pros and cons of actually taking but like we said mistake to take they're going to be thinking oh i'm going to do something fancy and what has he just done he's actually lost the piece yep so that's basically the understanding of like 1400s they they are good yeah when they're really on it but the brain goes into well i've i've developed a little bit so i need to start using mistake to takes don't take anything but when i do take um more times out of 10 it doesn't sit well uh, i mentioned that before they even did those um that um minor blunder there so it wasn't a sacrifice that was um 
uh, kind of a blunder. So 1300 now has got the advantage. They've got one minor piece up. But teamwork probably isn't going to happen. He's probably looking for this, um, not fork, but like a, a little bit of attack on the knight. But he's forsaking his king's safety for a little bit of an attack here. So sure footing has been forsaken. And I don't think that this system's going to wear it. He might lose the advantage of his extra minor piece if he's not careful. Probably needs to castle now. He's in too much. Oh, he's going for a little fork. Yeah, no problems there. But you need to really get get castled because you may pay the price. Rook is like right in front here. So when stuff kicks off, you don't know what's going to happen. He's got the knight protecting and the queen protecting. So it looks okay. It's a nice little fork that I do like that. We've had a few of those recently. So... It looks like he's going to be taking 1400 to the cleaners, but he still has to be very careful. So obviously he's going to take, but he needs to get his king castled. If he can get castled, then we could have a victory here. Because the opponent has given him the game by actually blundering his bishop. So teamwork is key here. He's accidentally got the knight defending the knight and the queen protecting the knight at the moment. So that was an accident. That wasn't done on purpose. Ay, 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 ay. Now he's dropped in the realms of being way fancy, feeling like, oh, I'm playing like a grandmaster. I've actually up a piece, so I'm actually going to take them to the cleaners now. And now the knights escaped. <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay, I don't know how long it's escaped for. But it does have potential for taking a pawn here. Might not survive if it does go there. But I suppose it can go back. So the advantage now. His king is so stuck in the middle of the board. Because they wanted to get a little bit airy-fairy. So he's going to have to come back. Well, maybe go here. Then at least it opens up his king. But it's an exchange for an exchange. If the bishop takes. So a smaller piece, second like a higher piece, usually can't be wrong. I can't really see him coming back here because then he's got nowhere to go when the rook comes and attacks. So, yeah, he goes here. 1300s like to take pieces off the board. Up to a point. Until they start getting airy fairy. Look at this. Until they start getting a little bit airy fairy with the moves because he's seen this massive fork right here. So it's easily defendable because the rook can, or that rook can go there. Obviously, it probably would have been better this rook, I believe. Um, because now these pawns are looking to get a bit active. Look at this lovely fork here again. Oh, it's straight on. Nailed on. It's nailed on. Okay, so that's a nice touch there. Single attacks, but he lost out by not attacking the knight the first time. So is he going to lose out again? Queen does a little solitary move. Does he take the knight this time? A little bit too fancy. So if we can bring back the fanciness like I have to do in my games. Now he's got a pawn and he's on the bishop. Is he going to see this? Is he going to snap? Oh my gosh, he has done as well. So he loses. Oh, Shabbat. He's still up the minor piece. But he's taking. Oh, no, no. Oh, he's got a rook. Oh, he might get a queen. Oh, maybe not. If the queen went running there, then it would have been done. So now it takes open, but it's opening up space around the king area. Because you can see them probably the knight coming here now, queen coming here, putting a check on the king. So that, yeah, it's moved somewhere to make space for the queen coming through. So 1300 has accidentally got a extra minor piece from the opponent's blunder. And he's got his king stuck in the center of the board. I wondered when he was going to start trying to take advantage. So he should be moving here. But then the queen is just going to come and put a check on. Where does he go then? The queen is going to, is going to be suffering, surely. Why it should not let him off the hook now? So then he's going to have to, well, even there, I suppose. 
but then can't come back here so you're gonna come back up here aren't you yeah it's coming up here 1400 attacking attacking attack but then he's safe so I think it probably would have been better not taking that pawn but just coming round here where was it now one there yeah just coming here because then he stops the king from coming back here that would have been a little bit more lethal because where does the king go queen can come and block but he gets taken so he's not going to do that he'd have to move up so it's putting pressure on the king so then you put more checks on them smallest of detail with the 1400 mindset yep it's grabbing a pawn it's putting a check on the king but the king escapes let's get back into the game so now his rook is trying to formulate something he's probably looking to double up trying to sit on this square but it's, it's guarded this queen is coming here to put a check on i think the rook is coming here to block that off so i think that's probably what they're doing so making it really hard work for themselves both it's got the advantage the knight doesn't have any protection on it i'm getting a sore throat knight doesn't have any protection on it what's this coming for a pawn maybe oh no he's coming for this he's coming for that it's giving him something to think about so his rook's gonna have to come back and then we've got the knight up here maybe or maybe to this one here but he does still have to be careful because if this rook gets here then he does have this queen move here so he might ignore all of what the, he's doing there and if it's like a 1400 that I'm picturing he is, he's going to come here. The knight is unprotected. So if black then panics and goes, oh, I better move my knight out the way and brings it up, he's getting checkmated. That's the pattern that I see from the 1400. It's brought the queen back instead. I don't think that's a total waste. And it's all over. <laughs> well, it might not be, but it, that just looks a bit horrendous. I don't understand why that queen moved there. That was... Oops, that was a better... I believe that was a better position, getting that attack in from here. He's come back to defend a piece that didn't really need defending, I don't think. Let me just have a look at that. I must be missing something. Yeah, so he's gone up. So the queen could potentially go here. Yeah. I suppose so. Maybe the rook could have just attacked his rook. And then he takes. Queen takes. It's lessening the load. Yeah, okay. I, I suppose I can see why he did that. Let's get back into the game. He's not made a move. He's come back and defended the pawn. But really, I, I still would have liked that to be there and just bring this rook here and protect. Because then he's still got this lovely attacking position on this pawn. But that's not happened, so uh, he's, now he's moved the queen back even further. That does not look good to me. And knight coming here, trying to condense, or even doubling up. I think double, as a basic measure, he's probably doubling up with the rook, bringing that across here, putting more pressure on the pawn. Don't take this pawn with the queen. Don't just focus on trying to squish the king. Let's see if that happens. So another interesting... Oh, he's gone with the knight. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. It's all over. Yeah, so I think the king's coming here. Is there any benefit going there? Sometimes you see them just hide in the corner and they're pretty safe. But. This rook can come up. Can come. Oh no. Yeah, so this rook can come up, come across. And it puts pressure on his queen, gets his queen off the board. Then you've got a queen and a rook against a rook and a rook. Seems fair dues to me. Yeah. Simplified. Bring the rook up, bring it across. 
up, although the rook would take his knight, so he could come up one, that's fine. He's wanting to get rid of the rook first, is he? Am I thinking like the 1300? So if the rook takes, rook takes, takes him offline. So that's, oh, no, 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 no. Knight takes. It's definitely over now. So they've both fallen into the um, concepts and expected manoeuvres for 1300s, 1400s. Uh, I really, I've really enjoyed this session. And takes, and then it's all over. Rook comes up, puts a check on. Queen moves out. Ooh, he's, um, but that's not going to last too long, is it? King just moves out of the way, then it's job done. So he weathered the storm against 1400. All because the 1400 either got a little bit confident or overconfident with their bishop and just came out with a single attack of sorts which really didn't have any potential value to it at all. And we, it was funny because we had mentioned the sort of traits of a 1400 just before they actually did that particular manoeuvre. And it, like I say, it's not saying all of them do that. It's like say everybody's saying whatever rating I've got, I play like that. Um, it's not the case. You know, sometimes you can play some absolutely fantastic games and he's actually got a drawn position here. <laughs> he's got a repetition. <laughs> oh, that's making me laugh. After all that, he's got these three pieces up here. He's going in for the kill. And <laughs> oh, maybe not, maybe not. He's got the rug that can come down and defend, but he's still got repetition. King's getting checked all over. Oh, this is making me laugh. I thought it was over. He's got 36 seconds left, 1,400. I thought 1,300 had cleaned him out. <laughs> it's, uh, he might be doing it now. He might be doing it. He comes down. Rook comes down. He comes across here to the centre. Oh, he doesn't. So I think he's letting him get away then. Goes here. Maybe drops there. But then he's definitely not got any um, repetition. And after that, yeah, he's done it now. With plenty of time to spare. Phew, well done. <laughs> it's come for the rook. Might be too late. Just needs to hide in here now. Because the queen can't put any checks on. Why is it taking so long? Just go hide your rook here. To get into this, oh my god, I'm gonna get a checkmate. Just um, oh, well, okay, fair enough. And then move the knight, it's done. Woo, crikey, okay, that will do for this session on 1300s.